All right, we are here at Sun and Fun 2023, where I got some very interesting news early in the show about an engine that I follow very closely, the Rotax engine and their new 916 model. And they said, well, we have an unusual launch customer. I had no idea what they were going to say next. Turns out it's this very airplane. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Brad Dom, and uh, you're going to tell me a little bit about this airplane that looks somewhat familiar, but somewhat not. What am I describing here, Brad? Uh, you're looking at an airplane that we're calling the Carbon Cub UL, and this is the first prototype. It's the first flying 916 IS on any airplane anywhere, um, and it's a product we've had in development for about the last year and a half. Okay. And so it's being shown for the first time here at Sun and Fun. For Cub crafters, this fills a gap in our product line so? in several different ways. Okay. Uh, one, there's a lot of Rotax fans out there. Rotax has been a great engine. They've made great inroads in general aviation. There's a lot of people that prefer to fly behind a Rotax you, engine. Your customers have been telling us that. Your prospective customers have been telling us You know, that. higher technology engine, uh, full fade at controls, all kinds of neat stuff. Um, and so we've been wanting to do that. Secondarily, for international markets, there's a lot of places in the world you just can't buy Avgas. Ah, that's an excellent point. And this airplane runs on Mogas or it runs on Avgas. The Rotax is the market leader on that. We also wanted a partner going internationally that had an international very robust service network that our customers could take advantage of. Valid. Again, that's Rotax. Uh, so it was a pretty good marriage. Rotax Sound like wanted, all paths lead to Rotax on this well, evaluation us, you just did. Yep, and, <laughs> and for Rotax, you know, Rotax, they haven't made big inroads into the backcountry flying community at True. our level with full-size airplanes before. Um, and so we were a good match for them to be able to put their new flagship engine on our airplane. So for us, the Carbon Cub, you know, the Carbon Cub uh, was first introduced in uh, 2006 as the Sport Cub. 2009, we put the 180 horsepower uh, stroked 0320 air engine on the airplane. It's our, been our most popular selling airplane over time. Fielded, is that right? Okay. Yeah, fielded over 500 of them. Is that um, right? Since it's been introduced. What's um, the next closest, just to put that in perspective? Uh, so the, the next closest would be the FX3, the third generation Carbon Cub with the IO360 in it and uh, we've sold over 200 and fielded about okay. 180 of those so far. All right, um, so the other one does have a substantial lead, doesn't it? Does it does have yeah. a substantial lead. And, and is this, now this isn't gonna replace either one of those though, is it? Or it's, is it's, it? It's, we don't know yet. Um, you <laughs> That's know, a fair answer. We're, we're early in the process. Yeah, this is, this is uh, a I prototype it will. based on an aircraft you already had. Is that correct? Like That's from here correct. back is a, I was told a Carbon Cub SS. That's is that right? right. For, from right now, from here back, this is a Carbon Cub SS. From here forward, which is our LSA airplane. From here forward, this is all oh, new. panel forward then, huh? All, panel, okay. panel forward, it's new. All right, very so, cool. So uh, for us, you know, it's additive to what we're already doing to access a new market. But what the future holds, I don't know. Um, I didn't come in with a lot of preconceived notions. Before leaving Yakima, I had maybe three to five hours flying behind a Rotax engine. So this <laughs> And was, you flew it out here? And I flew it out you here. You got about four hours country. now. What kind, what kind of flight time? Now, this, folks, if you don't know, they're coming a long way to get here. So how many hours of flying did it take you? I have no idea. It took five <laughs> days. Uh, five days. That's a fair answer. A big you know. part of that was because of weather. You know, yeah, getting sure, out of sure. the Pacific Northwest, it's been crazy in the West with snow. And so we actually had to go west first to the Pacific Ocean and then get low level and go down along the Pacific Ocean to California where we had good weather and then cut across the bottom of the country through Texas and that route to get here to Florida. So we could not go direct. So it took a little extra time. <laughs> well, you got a little more Rotex on yeah, that. So yeah. you got a few hours in your book now. But uh, I had cool. the airplane everything from, you know, uh, flying at uh, under 500 feet AGL down along the coast in that area where we can sweet, do that legally sweet. to, uh, you know, uh, heading out of Scottsdale to El Paso. I was up at 17,500 feet, you know, with, uh, with 60 knots of tailwind up high. Uh, the I heard about engine. a pretty high true airspeed number, like 159 or something like that. Well, yeah, up high. Yeah, uh, of course, right. At maximum. Not the actual speed of the airplane. We know that, yeah. You know, uh, true up, airspeed, uh, Up high where these airplanes don't normally fly. <laughs> um, just to see what it would do up high. Yes, I brought an oxygen bottle. I got up I to was 70. Just gonna, and how about clothing? I got, oh, actually, the heater worked pretty good. I didn't Did have it? To, okay. I didn't have to do that. Is that right? Um, it's but, pretty uh, cool up there, though. But pretty cool up there. Outside air temperature, I think, was 11 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, um, so that was the coldest temperatures the engine had experienced so far. <sighs> that was the highest altitude that the engine had experienced well, so far. Why are you like breaking stuff and, all over the place, uh, aren't you? You know, it uh, <laughs> Rotax undersold what this engine is capable of. Is that right? Uh, because 
you know, they're saying that it maintains uh, takeoff power up to 17 and cruise power up to like 23. Um, but at 17.5, I was still seeing manifold pressure in excess of 45 inches. So I think the engine actually beats their numbers that they're publishing. Well, That's, they've always been a little conservative, at least at first, yep. until they get some, you know, you're going to help them a lot with this, yeah. so that's good. So, anyway, but, yeah. uh, tell me about climb rate on that last bit up to 17,500 where you were. Uh, so I just, uh, airplane's got, got an autopilot, so I just had it stuck on 500 feet per minute on the autopilot, and I let it do its thing. Um, as I was, kept going up, no I was just, you know, monitoring temperatures, pressures, making notes for our engineering department. Ah, okay, good, good. And it just kept going at 500 feet a minute, uh, right up to 17,500, and then, uh, at 17.5, I think I was, uh, you know, indicated airspeed was like um, 105 or 109, but uh, true airspeed was north of 150. And with a uh, with the tailwind I and had up tailwind. there, I was uh, ground speed was uh, over 230 miles an hour, which, is that which, right? which for a Cub is pretty darn good. I'm just going to say, somewhere. I'm not sure that I've ever heard that number associated with any Cub type shape. Yep. So that's pretty amazing. Now, of course, we're talking tailwind and high yeah. altitudes. I get that, but but still, you can expect some pretty good performance for this airplane. Yeah, I was I was uh, again without coming into pre without coming in with a bunch of preconceived notions of what a Rotax is, what a Rotax is supposed to be, all that sort of stuff. I was super impressed with the way the engine behaved on the trip out here. Very few squawks. Um, it was a good trip out. Uh, the biggest problem for me was actually getting caught by weather in Alabama. Yeah, right, um, right. You can't do anything about that. You, you can't design around that. So. I had, I did not know that here in the south, you can actually get dense fog and a thunderstorm at the same time. But <laughs> Welcome apparently it's possible. <laughs> you got your own weather up here in the northwest? We got ours down here in yep. the southeast. So glad you made it all the way. Let me ask you a little bit about weight. I'm guessing you got a weight advantage with this versus the three, uh, 320. Yeah, so the... Uh, Tell me a little bit of numbers. This installation here, which is not our not lightest weight installation. Uh, this is our yeah, yeah, this, this, is a prototype. this is our initial installation. Our, our engineering, uh, um, I guess it's a prototype. We're, we're calling it an engineering prototype. Okay. The engineering idea behind prototype. this airplane was to get the 916 flying, to learn what we needed to learn to be able to design the production version of the airplane, which will be a little bit different. So this airplane that you see right here is is maybe 80% of what you might see in the final production okay, version. Okay, so you're very close then. Well, yeah, very close, but that last well, 20% is the, yeah, hardest, right. is the hardest well, piece there's to There's a lot get. of work in there, yeah. So so we got a guesstimate on weight saving? Um, so we believe that with the final production version of the airplane, we will be able to have two adults, a 200-pound pilot, a 120-pound passenger, full fuel, 20 pounds of baggage, and be under 600 kilograms. Which is thirteen twenty okay. pounds. Okay. All right. So wow. that's really that's, that, that, that's where we believe. So, what kind be. of empty weight number do you think you'll come in at? You got a number uh, on that? So it'll be uh, less than four hundred kilograms. Um, and uh, okay, translating I think that for be, Americans, that's under nine hundred pounds. Yeah, so that's I, pretty and, light. And, and I think it'll be as my it, personal belief is. I believe it'll be eight fifty, eight sixty. No kidding. Uh, but we got a little pool, bet and pool going at the factory, so uh, we'll figure out where that number is. But All right. Well, sometime than, you're going to have to tell me who won and what the number was. Less than 400 oh, kilograms, wow. empty weight, with a maximum gross weight of up to 700 kilograms for those areas that have the advanced ultralight category up to 700 kilograms or under 600 kilograms for the normal ultralight and LSA category here in the U.S. and in a lot of jurisdictions. Well, you're well way. positioned for the mosaic rule then, uh, yes. which will allow you to raise that undoubtedly. Uh, we don't know exactly what yet, yeah, but we don't know, for but, sure uh, it'll go up. We know that. Even if nothing changes from where it is right now. Well, this, you're still good, right? This, this With no change, you can still fully yeah. qualify LSA as we know it today. Yep. Very cool. Well, I'm excited about that. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed looking at the development of your other airplanes after the Carbon Cub SS. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, I'm a light sport guy, so I kind of went, well, that's not really my area. But I saw this and I saw the UL on the end and I went, now that's interesting to me. And all the people that like to follow what I do. So. Yeah. Well, let me talk, you know, some of the changes we're going to make on the Please. airplane or that we already have made. So we've got the uh, 916 IS uh, uh -huh. that's flying right now. Uh, but this is also a new cowling on the airplane. Instead of a vacuum bagged composite cowl, this is a prepreg composite uh -huh. cowl. Oh, really? Okay. And so this... The, the composite itself weighs about 30% I was going to say, that should make it lighter, doesn't about it? About 30% weight savings over the cowling on the Carbon Cub SS. Significant. Significant. Uh, this airplane has a titanium firewall instead of a stainless steel firewall. Oh, wow. Instead of an aluminum boot cowl, it's got a composite boot cowl. And again, it's a prepreg composite boot cowl. And, and by boot cowl, you're talking We're about talking this portion? This, this portion right here. OK. Um, you can't see the avionics package in this, uh, but the I'll put some images up of it. It's I took got it the G3X avionics package in it. Um, 
but it's a smaller, lighter weight version of the G3X avionics package. So again, we'll go through this airplane from the spinner all the way to the tail light, all the way out to the wingtips. We've got a lot more technology than we had 12 years ago when the Carbon Cub was introduced. Oh, that's a fact, that's available to yeah. us. We've got better manufacturing techniques. We've got more sophisticated design tools at Cub Crafters to do it. And so uh, we're real confident we'll get there. Cool. Well, congratulations. When do, when will we see this emerge now? You mentioned something earlier. Tell yeah. me again. So, again, 2023, this airplane here goes back to the factory. It goes back into the engineering cycle. And we do a whole bunch of testing to learn all the different things we need to sure, learn sure. to block a final design. Once engineering likes where the airplane's at, then in the first half of 2024, uh, we will have half a dozen demo airplanes and there will be demo airplanes going to Europe and demo airplanes going to South America and demo airplanes here in the U.S. And we're going to do a market survey effort ah, okay. for the first half and get customers in the airplane because we always get really great customers feedback uh, when we do market survey. That's one of the things we learned with the nose wheel airplanes. Ah. The market survey was essential to the success of that airplane. So we'll do the market survey. We'll get a bunch of good feedback. That'll result in further design iterations. Mid-2024, we'll lock the design, uh, and then the first production airplanes start being built in the first, in the fourth quarter of 2024. Fourth quarter of 2024. For delivery in the first quarter of 2025. Okay. And so we're taking deposits right now for those 2025 deliveries. We've already taken half a dozen deposits here at the show. It's been a great show for us. And, All right. Uh, so we're uh, you're off to the races. This thing's this off stuff. to the races. Yeah. Cool. Very good. How do we find out more from you? We, you gave us a bunch of information. We never like to get it all because yeah. we want to send people your way. Where do we go find Cub Crafters online, Brad? The link is www.cubcrafters.com backslash SNF23. SNF23. Okay. Sun and Fun 2023. Got it. And so SNF2023 or SNF23 is the link. You go to that link there. You can get uh, our press release, you can get Rotax's press release, you can get the tech data sheet on the airplane. Excellent. Uh, you can see some more cool videos of the airplane. Um, and as more information comes out, as soon as I get done with this show here, I'm taking notes of common questions people are asking. Uh, so we'll put together a, a common Q&A sheet. We will post it there. But that's the central hub for anything regarding this airplane here is uh, that, that cubcrafters.com backslash SNF23. Excellent. Yep. Good stuff, Brad. All you right. can find lots more about earlier Cub Crafters and all these aircraft out here on ByDanJohnson.com where you can find all the light sport and sport pilot kit airplanes, I think, just about anywhere. Thanks so much for talking with myself and Brad today. Best of luck. All right. Thank Hope you. Hope sell a lot of these guys. We will.